We are still in the topic of elementary logic. Last time we spoke about simple and compound statements and we introduced the, the symbols that we use to form compound statements. So today I will introduce you to quantifiers. So what are quantifiers? Quantifiers describe the quantity of objects in the domain of a function or a set. They describe the quantity of objects that meet some defined characteristics. Okay, so when they are describing the quantity, they are not telling you exactly how many there are. So it's, it's not like that. These quantifiers are like nouns, adjectives that describe the size of the quantity of something. Okay, the size of something, the quantity of something, and how many there are, but not by stating exactly how many elements there are. Okay, so this one would be an example of universal quantifiers. So the key phrase here or the key adjective here is universal. When you say universal, everything. So the words and phrases that go along with universal quantifiers are for all, all, every. So none and no. These are also universal uh, quantifiers, although it is written in the negative form or negation form. Our symbol for, for the universal quantifier is this one. Uh, it's like the upside down letter A. Okay, what would be an example of this? Let's say, for example, in your properties of real numbers. For all real numbers, for any real number or for all real numbers X, when you multiply x to 0, the product is 0. So that is a universal statement. And symbolically, we will use that symbol here. Okay, This one is what you call existential quantifiers. And the symbol for that is this. So this is like a letter E facing to the left. So what are the phrases, the nouns, that tell us the statement is essentially an existential quantifier? Some. Okay, there exists or there is, when there exists, so that means there is at least one object that meets a certain criteria. Okay, so let us put this into action. So last time, we spoke about connectives and the symbols that we shall use to form compound statements in a math language. And then at the beginning of our, of our videos for this part, we spoke about the common math symbols we shall put them together together with your quantifiers okay so we shall write universal quantifiers in math language well what we have here is is a sentence an english sentence with math content our goal is to write this in math language okay so how shall we begin look at that for all real numbers x and y if x times y is greater than zero then either x and y are positive or x and y are negative. So how do we write that in math language? So we shall use now your universal quantifiers because this one indicates a universal quantifier for all real numbers x and y. So we shall use this symbol for all x and y that are elements of the set of real numbers. That is how you translate that. That is how you read it in uh, English sentence verbatim, although it sounds awful. You know what? When you speak, you must speak in a way that is pleasant to listen to. Okay, so we can just say for all X and Y, that is a real number. Okay, what else? If X, Y is greater than zero. Okay, so that is how we put it. It's the product X, Y is greater than zero. And then there is a connective here. If, then... So we are using that symbol for implication. Either X and Y are positive. Either is another connective. Okay, either or. But this one is a conjunction. X is positive and Y is positive. So we shall use that connective, that conjunction. X is positive and Y is positive. Either or is a disjunction, is a connective for disjunction. And then again, X and Y are negative. So how do we write that in math language? X is less than zero and Y is less than zero. So let us put this together. This is your math sentence using math language. 
Okay, so that is how it looks. But when we read it, we will read it in a way that is pleasant to, to our ears. Okay, so how do we read this? For any real number x and y, okay, so this one is a connective uh, implication. If x times y is positive, then either both x and y are positive or both x and y are negative. This is how I wrote this in our book, okay? x times y is positive. It's, it's the same as saying that the product xy is an element of the set of positive real numbers. So this one is the same as this. x and x is greater than 0 or y is greater than 0. It's the same with this one. x and y are elements of the positive real numbers. Or x is less than 0 and y is less than 0. We can also put it in this way x and y are elements of the set of negative real numbers. Letter B, for all integers x and y, x plus y is an integer. For all. So that is a universal quantifier. Okay. For all x, y, for all x and y, which is an integer, the sum is also an integer. Okay. So in math sentence, that is how you put it. Letter C, for all real numbers x and y, if x plus y is 0, then x is equal to negative y. Again, for all real numbers, we shall use your universal quantifier for all x, for all y, that is a real number. This is a connective if then. So somewhere here, you will use the, uh, our symbol for connective, for implication, I mean. Okay, so if x plus y is equal to 0, then x is equal to negative y. This is how you put it. Again, how do we read it? For all x and y, that is a real number. If x plus y is 0, then x is equal to negative y. Let x and y be real numbers not equal to 0. If x times y is 1, then y is equal to uh, the inverse of x or the multiplicative inverse of x. Okay, so let x and y be real numbers not equal to zero. So that is a universal uh, quantifier. For any real number x and y, not equal to zero, x is not equal to zero, okay? And y is not equal to zero. x, y is equal to one. Again, this is a connective. If then, that is an implication. So this one is a conditional statement. We will use that. Okay, so let us put that together. For any real number x and y, such that x is not 0 and y is not 0, if x times y is 1, then y is equal to the multiplicative inverse of x.